You may believe the big bad boomstick can bring more bother than they will ever benefit. But you see, a lot of what gets you killed is not having a solid knowledge on how guns work, and not having a plan for when you use them. With this series, we'll alleviate that. Project Zomboid was made to answer the question, what would you do during a zombie apocalypse? So that's how I intend to approach this guy. Risk mitigation will be the name of the game here. So without further ado, here's the agenda for this video. Starting out, if you want to be the best with guns, pick a profession that specializes in it, along with some trades that will complement guns as well. These are the police officer and the veteran, with traits such as brave, hunter, and gymnast. Gymnast sounds like a, an odd one, but nimble is important to combat, and training it can be rather grindy, so a head start is always welcome. Now before we even look at a gun, we must understand it. We must be the gun. Many people are probably using guns wrong. So let's go ahead and make it common knowledge. Guns in general operate most efficiently at range. No duh, you say. But let me explain. Next, be intimate with each type of firearm. Each gun will have its own effective ranges and noise radiuses, and knowing these will help your positioning keeping those Zeds beyond arm's reach. The closer Zeds get, the less effective your gun is, the quicker your escape path closes off, and the more susceptible you become to a stray or ninja zombie becoming a lethal encounter. Zeds beyond a certain point move slightly slower. This is displayed with the arms up mechanic. When they toss their arms up, they're going to be a little bit faster when they're actively targeting you. Therefore, they're easier to manage at further ranges. One last thing I would like to put out there is that I won't even think about using a gun until I have a reliable vehicle. Next, know what weapons are beginner friendly. These are your shotguns, and then for you vanilla purists, it's your M36 and your M9 handguns. But for you Brita lovers, it's your smaller calibers such as your 380s. Hands down, shotguns are your best way to level up your aim, netting about 10.75 experience of aim if you manage to hit four Zeds at once. If you choose your shots wisely, you could see yourself easily walking away with an aim level gain of 2 plus starting from aim level 0. Shotguns, however, do not receive a range boost from increased levels of aim, like every other gun does. So once you gain a couple levels of aim, it may be wise to switch to a beginner or intermediate level pistol so you can put some distance between you and those Zeds. The M9 is my go-to, as unlike the M36, it can accept weapon attachments. Now the next thing you need to know before even picking up a gun is you don't want to go in half cocked. If you wish to survive, you must have a clear cut set of plans and rules, and have a set of exfil rules. We'll get into this a little bit more later. Oh hey! You just found a gun! Well, go ahead and do yourself a favor and pack it away. Using a boomstick without a proper base and a way to make a quick escape is a recipe for disaster. What you could be doing with this weapon until you're better situated is leveling up reload. You gain .75 experience in reloading per round inserted, but only on inserted. You won't gain any reload experience from ejecting shells. Another key skill you should be training in preparation, if you haven't taken an occupation or trait that boosts it, is nimble. This skill is uh, pretty grindy, but you can train it just by moving around in the combat stance, even alone in your base. A couple levels of this can be exponentially helpful as it aids in the one key area of gunfighting, positioning. Using combat stance allows you to keep your front towards the horde while simultaneously backpedaling. 
The higher your nimbleness, the faster you move in the combat stance. At nimble levels 0 through 3, depending on your fitness level, Zeds will outpace you while you're in the combat stance, causing you to have to pause momentarily to turn around to walk, jog, sprint, or run away. It can take roughly 7 to 8 hours in real life time to reach nimble level 4 if you just do it all night walking against the wall. So don't stress about getting it too high. Just one or two levels will help quite a bit. Next, it's time to scout potential areas to train. Now, a couple of things you need to know right off the bat. Do not even think about going into the middle of a crowded town to start blasting away at the undead. And also, like the old saying goes, don't shit where you eat. This means definitely don't pop off near home base. Well, un unless it's absolutely necessary, just don't go training your aim near your base. All right, with that out of the way, pick yourself some high population areas with good entry and exit points. You want to be able to easily walk in and out of the location you're in. Don't choose areas with routes that can be blocked off by the incoming dead or areas where a vehicle can become easily stuck. All right, we have our spots picked, our entry and exit points. We've trained reloading and nimble. We're all situated with a secure, secluded base. So now we're ready, right? No, still not ready. Abraham Lincoln once said, you give me six hours to chop a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. It's all in the preparation, my friends. Now we ready our minds and body. Well, our, our character's body at least. To be completely ready for the day ahead, ensure your character isn't or won't be sore in the arms, isn't currently injured in the arms, and will be sufficiently rested. Arm injuries, muscle fatigue, and the tired moodle are what we are trying to prevent and stave off. Arm injuries and muscle fatigue affect weapon accuracy. Both of these will stack, and each injury you take to the arm will add more debuffs. Bandaging wounds will help the debuff, but only 30-50% to 50 of that debuff so keep those meat beaters healthy. Tiredness is also quite punishing, with the drowsy moodle immediately decreasing accuracy by 5%, jumping up another 5% at every next tiredness level until a max of negative 20 at ridiculously tired. All these accuracy debuffs will stack until you reach a floor of 10% accuracy. We should also talk about the panic moodle. Being panicked doesn't directly affect weapon accuracy. It will affect crit chance though, roughly by 7%. And it possibly affects damage, but with how PZ calculates both damage and crit chance with guns, I wouldn't take those numbers as gospel. There are just too many variables for me to nail anything solid down. It will also slow down reload speed by roughly 20 to 25%, which with the M36 at level zero reload, this can mean a full extra second spent reloading. So I'd still pop some beta blockers if your character is susceptible to panic. Next, we need some provisions to keep our body strong. I'd suggest things to keep the tired moodle at bay, such as vitamins and caffeinated drinks. I wouldn't make it a point to rely on these, just to have them in case of emergencies, such if you find yourself having to fight your way out of being surrounded, or if your vehicle gets overrun and you have to ditch it to make it out alive. Hopefully our planning here will mitigate that risk. Next is food and water. Keep a small ration of these on you for those extended training and clearing sessions, specifically anything that won't spoil. Typically, I'll load these into the passenger seat of the vehicle I'm driving so I'm not loaded down with canned goods and water bottles. And when I do eat, I can do so from the safety of the vehicle. Also, don't forget to pack those magazines for any weapons that you intend to use, if it has an external ma magazine. Rely on your vehicle for storage. You don't want to be over encumbered as this increases your stamina drain, with higher levels damaging your footwear. One last point on provisions, really just a tip. Weapons with internal magazines can have their ammunition stored inside bags with a negligible, if any, penalty to reload speed. That way you save some room on storage and keep fatigue at bay a little longer. If you do keep external mags in your bag, you can still reload. It just is kind of clunky. Sometimes you have to double tap R. I would just say keep a small stack in your main inventory. All right, we are prepped, planned, mentally and physically ready. Now is the time, brothers and sisters. We ride at dawn. So what's the strategy? Well, you can do some guerrilla operations and shoot out of the window of the vehicle. Yeah, you can train guns without ever leaving the safety of your car. The thing to know is that you are still vulnerable, as zombies can attack through the driver's window when it's rolled down. 
Vehicles have a tendency to create this false sense of security. Stick to your plans and keep those zombies away from the vehicle. You still have to position the driver's windows facing in your intended targets too. Also, don't place the vehicle into a position where you can see it becoming easily stuck. A mob of Zeds will slow the vehicle down to a crawl, allowing them to access the driver's window or break it. You still very much need to stick to panning even if you just intend to do drive-bys. That being said, it is one of the safest methods to train aim. However, you can see yourself using up more ammunition as it is more difficult to maintain that optimum range when engaging Zeds. Next is using long stretches of pre-existing, high, long-running fences. If the fences extend beyond the player's chunk, then zombies cannot path to you, and they won't attempt to break the fence down if it's pre-existing. This means you're completely safe, as long as nothing sneaks up behind you. But you can pair this with a vehicle, pressing the driver's side of the vehicle up to the fence to almost completely remove zombies' ability to get to you. Just don't let your vehicle become surrounded. Now, the method that I prefer is parking the vehicle at a fair distance away from my intended training area. That way, if things start getting hairy or you need to resupply, you can easily create distance away from the horde to access your vehicle in relative safety. Regardless of which strategy you intend to use, start on the outskirts and work your way in. That way, there's less of a chance of you becoming surrounded or getting attacked from behind. Alright, so now you're blasting. What are some things that can help keep us alive? For starters, don't forget about those weapons effective ranges. Keep those Zeds within the optimum kill ranges. Keep moving in a way that best manages the hordes you're dealing with. Always keep your head on a swivel. With our established positioning and entry and exit points, it should be extremely easy to engage a majority of the horde from one direction. This way we know where most of the zombies are coming from so that we are less likely to be surprised from behind. This doesn't mean don't check your six. During every reload or when you find yourself having to wait for Zeds to come within range, do a quick 360 and make sure that no ninja Zeds are sneaking out of the forest somewhere. Next is stick to your exfil rules. An example of an exfil rule that I use is I typically leave when I begin to get tired as I'll just start to waste ammunition with decreased accuracy anyways. Do not get overconfident and don't push it. I personally know that when I start having thoughts of justifying unnecessary risk, I know it's probably time to get out of Dodge. All right, we stuck to our plans, didn't have to abandon our vehicle, and we are sitting at three aim and some change. Now we're looking at clearing some high value areas, such as a gas station, police station, or gun shop. So what now? Well, Daniel-san, you're pretty much ready. Your preparation for the training and the training itself will see you through clearing your first high value target. Once again, stick to your rules and plans. It's okay if you have to come back and pick up where you left off, even if more zombies move in while you're gone. The only other tip I have for clearing areas is don't be afraid to reposition your vehicle further up into the area as you clear it out. 